Greetings, and welcome to episode 12. This episode is the first in a multi-video series that is going to help us describe and tear down and build back up what is described as the spiritual path. I want to discuss how it relates to religion and mundane things as well. It should be very interesting. I hope you stick around for all videos. Also, I would like to mention that the show Side Notes will no longer be airing on Tuesdays and Thursdays and will now be showing on Saturdays and Sundays because I like doing full videos more than the little ones and I, I kind of feel bad not doing them on the weekend so we have that to look forward to but <clears throat> I, right now I want you to sit back relax and enjoy this episode So, the spiritual path. I was hoping to avoid this one, but it, it seems inevitable because if you're new to the path or the journey or whatever you started calling it yourself, then it's, it's, val it's going to be valuable information. If you're super spiritual or super religious, my goal is not to alienate people that are religious. It is to show the similarities between the path and religion. It's uh, hopefully going to be about tearing down walls more than it is going to be about building them up. Because let's face it, there are enough walls separating us. We don't need another taste great, less filling argument. And I'm not going to be for those that are more spiritual or for those that are more religious. I can say I started from a more religious standpoint, and this is where I am today. And uh, obviously, we're going to have to touch base with beliefs and belief systems, those, those operating systems through which we view the world and how some operating systems become obsolete we need upgrades there are things that were set down thousands of years ago that are no longer valid now <clears throat> excuse me and granted we don't get to pick and choose but the more I explain the more you'll see how outdated operating systems can hurt the the, the computer as a whole because and that's how I'm going to be discussing it, like computer components, because that is the easiest way I've found to discuss it, because you don't have to have faith that there's a computer. And these mechanisms can be described scientifically, but I lack, I'm not going to lie, I lack the language to describe them from a scientific standpoint. It's semantics is pretty much what you're getting into there. This is completely layperson. I may be throwing in a few nickel and dime words here and there but nothing like you may hear on some other channels okay I'm not gonna lie and say well I have a PhD I don't this is experienced based knowledge only I'm not standing on the shoulders of giants this is from the horse's mouth to you so let's jump right in shall we so, the path, the spiritual journey. <coughs> Having been a religious person, I can tell you that the path is completely different. It's a completely different monster when you're religious versus spiritual. It is being led by the hand versus creative expression and uh, viewing I found viewing the world through those old eyes through that old operating system it just it wasn't enough and indeed the more I studied the more books I read the more documentaries I watched the more speakers I listened to I came to find out in me that there was more to it to keep looking. Now, don't think for a minute that I have lost sight of the goal, which is 
what the religious people would call God. I just, I don't call it God anymore. It is still my main focal point in that arena. And make no mistake, if you are a very religious person and you hear someone call it Source, the Creator, or what have you, they're talking about the same entity. Don't get caught up in semantics and start waggling your finger and punching Bibles. They're talking about the same entity. What they're not doing is relying on a 2,000-year-old operating system to describe it. That is the only difference. And in this day and age, it is imperative that anybody on any path takes the time and responsibility for their journey to dig a little deeper to get all of the information because there's information about the Bible that you swear by that you don't even know and you don't even know you don't know it because you have accepted that with the firewall of don't ask any questions God is great and so you go no further than that firewall well those of us that didn't care for that answer found there's more to it. And it didn't lead me away from God. In my opinion, it took out the middleman. That's it. Not having religion, per se, does nothing but put the responsibility of the path in your lap. You have to decide where and when to commune with God. You have to decide where and when to be morally right. It puts the responsibility on the seeker and not the church whatever church it doesn't matter if you're Muslim it doesn't matter if you're Buddhist it doesn't matter if you're Christian it doesn't matter what religion you hold when you take responsibility for your journey you will see that your creative expression of the journey it enhances it it doesn't kill it. You'll enhance, you can do nothing but enhance your connection to Source, to God. <clears throat> You're going to hear me make reference to Source. And I say Source because science is starting to quantify religious theory. Or should I say religious belief and faith? But not the down to the parables and the, the 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 chapters and verses, the existence of God in general. So, if you hear me speaking in scientific terms or falling back on scientific method, that's why, because I'm trying to maintain that faith is not even needed. He said, we got to have faith. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not anymore. Not if you upgrade to the new software. You don't need faith anymore. You just have to reread the Bible. And this time, instead of praise be Jesus, actually listen to what he said. If you drink of my mouth and become full, walk next to me. Why would he say that? Well, that doesn't make any sense. Is he going to spit in my mouth? I mean, that's how literally you guys take it. The religious folks. Well, he said, well, he also said, drink of my mouth and become full. Is he going to spit in your mouth? Backwash? It really? Religious backwash? Is that, what, is that what you're saying? Or maybe he's saying, if you understand the words that I'm saying, come and walk next to me. As an equal. That could be what he's saying. Because if you take some of these passages as literal as you take the other passages, you're talking about backwash from another dude. And, yeah, maybe it's time to upgrade that software. <laughs> but that's not upgrade the software and put that book away. No, 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 at all. Because that's not how I did it. I upgraded the software and reread the book. Now, when you reread that book through different eyes, you get a different take on it. It doesn't change the story. It doesn't. It helps you shed the unimportant parts because what people don't understand is 
there are three books in that one tome. There's magical texts, scientific texts, and the almost complete history of a people at the time. <clears throat> now you have to understand that cultures that were centuries older than the culture that adopted Christianity as a religion 2,000 years ago or 2,000 plus years ago are where a lot of these stories originate. It doesn't diminish their importance. It just says that the planet's older than 5,000 years. And the, the stretch that most religious people can't get around is how can all this happen if the world's only 5,000 years old? Upgrade your software. <laughs> if science proves God exists, perhaps it also proves that God existed millions of years ago back when we were first put here, created, however you want to put it. But there are things that you need to know about that book. And I'm only speaking about the Christian Bible. I'm not speaking about the Quran because the Quran came after. And a lot of the stories are of that time period when Muhammad walked the earth. Who, by the way, was known as a prophet and not a god. And there are there was a book that came to light, a Bible found, I can't remember where it was, that says that Jesus did in fact walk the earth, but he was a mortal man, but a prophet. These these books, they cannot just they cannot be discounted just because they're not already in the Bible. Because we all know that at the Council of Nicaea, they cherry-picked what books were going to go in to the Bible in the first place. So, knowing that, we move forward. And that, that alone says, maybe it's time to upgrade the operating system. At least look into upgrading some of the software. At least. Because... Allegory and parable and metaphor are to be deciphered, not taken literally. And anyone that's ever read a myth can read the Bible and see that a lot of those stories are myths or parables. Parables are just stories with a moral. Jesus was walking with two of his disciples and they saw the carcass of a dog on the side of the road and the, the two disciples they, they flinch away and, oh, the smell. And Jesus says, what beautiful teeth that animal has. If you don't tear that apart, you're going to say, that's kind of random. But if you tear it apart as a parable, a story with a, with a moral, it's look for the good in all situations. There's a rotting carcass on the side of the road that smells horribly, as attested by the the two disciples, but Jesus sees that, wow, look at those sparkling clean teeth. See the good in all things, in every situation. But if you read it literally, it's just a random happening, and what? He did what? That's like spitting the juice in the mouth, and what? <laughs> and it took upgrading the software for me to see that I was never even when I was a Satanist, I wasn't rebelling against God. I was rebelling against the way religion is taught. I was rebelling against the church because it's the church's fault that the operating system, that operating system should still work today. It should still be valid 2,000 years later should still be valid. All we should have ever had to do was upgrade some of the software. Like, uh, it's not okay to hold slaves anymore. Women, to me, aren't a second-class citizen. So, some of the software, yeah, any, any system will eventually need to be upgraded. But the operating system, if run properly, should have lasted this long and far into the future. But because of the way it was taught for the last 2,000 years, 
it's broken more psyches than it's fixed. Any truth that has to be spread at the tip of a sword is not the truth. I don't care how you package it. It's how you teach it. It's how you spread it that makes the difference. The difference, let me, let me, let me, let me go on to the flip side. The difference of the spiritual path versus the religious path. And don't get me wrong. Upgraded software or not, if the person using the software is broken, then they're not going to see anything worthwhile either. But that free expression to love God as you see fit, to commune with Source as you see fit, when you see fit, there's no particular day of the week that you can say, I'm right here, and you don't have to pay close attention. I just wanted to let you know, doing all right, thanks. That simple. Of course, I'm in a semi-meditative state, so... It's it's a little bit easier. And I want to get into prayer, but maybe not in, in this series. Because <clears throat> uh, it doesn't matter what you upload. That's what praying is like, upload. If you're uploading and your operating system is, is junk, then your upload's going to reflect that. Because you're trying to upload what's going on now through that old, 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 old software, hardware, whatever, through that old operating system. You're trying to upload all this modern information, and that doesn't make any sense. How come this doesn't fit? How come that doesn't fit? And that's, and that's what's going on with people. <clears throat> and those beliefs are so rigid it has to be done this way. Who said it has to be done this way? Because if you're having to do it this way, like it says in the Bible, you're doing it wrong, and you need to reread your Bible. You don't get to cherry-pick the things that say, well, I hate that guy. That's all I hear is, hate that guy. If someone, and Nowhere in the Bible does it say, if someone tries to steer you correctly, even outside of the context of the Bible, that person is wrong. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that. I'm not trying to tell you not to use the Bible. I'm trying to teach you how to use the Bible correctly. Those on the spiritual path or journey or whatever they call it, <clears throat> they've already got the upgraded operating system. They're using their freedom, their free-form expression to exist to explore what the Creator has put here for us to know, to learn. We were supposed to learn what Jesus knew. But instead of learning what Jesus knew, we're sitting there just worshipping the fact that He existed? Really? That doesn't seem like any way of being to me. Because if anyone else, if anyone stood up in society today and said, I'm Jesus, you drag him out to the square and you'd stone him. So, obviously worshipping people isn't the point. Perhaps knowing, knowing that he's a, a teacher, maybe pay homage to the masters, but follow what he said rather than the fact that he existed. We need no such, I don't know, what would you call it? No such pretense? I don't need to, to worship anything or anyone to know that I have a connection with God. And trust me, when you have a connection with the devil, there's no way you cannot know you have a connection with the devil. I can guarantee you that, having been a Satanist. So when you tell someone that says, well, I'm spiritual, and you tell them, well, that's the devil, trust me. If it were the devil, they would know it. And the fact that you only go by that book tells me that you there's no possible way you could know it. And if the devil is the father of lies, why is that book taught wrong? 
so that you take everything as literal instead of decoding the myths, the legends, the parables. That's a, it's an awesome book, but as long as it as as long as it exists as a defunct operating system, I can't use it. I can't use anything from it. And there are places, there are scholars, like there's a few scholars up in New York that have videos on YouTube, and they'll break it down for you. They'll break it down for you in such a way that, like I said, it is still a valid operating system that you can use today. And all you have to do is upgrade your operating system. <laughs> it's not a huge stretch to listen to what the man said rather than worship the fact that he existed. Look at Islam. Yes, they worship the fact that he existed, and you don't badmouth the elders. You do not badmouth the prophets. But they don't worship the elders. They don't worship the prophets. They worship. They don't even worship what they said. They follow what they said. That is the difference. Well, uh, they got... Uh, uh, no, that's somebody using a religion for political means. That's where you get the radical Islam and the bombings and the terrorists. Because when it was Christianity doing the same thing for centuries over the entirety of the earth, nobody said a word, and that's how they got into prominence as it is. So, look at the book itself and the religion sans control system. You know what I'm saying? Don't look at it as the political tool that it's turned into. And in my opinion, a path is a path is a path. And the teacher is a, is a beautiful thing. But once you turn it into a religion, it becomes a political tool. And is no longer of any use to anyone. The path and religion should be separate. You follow the religion of your nation for national security because an outsider is not going to pray like us it's not going to do like us and you can keep your eye on that person and this is this is this is speaking in terms of 2000 years ago okay which is where religion came from anyway out of necessity for national security they're not going to pray like us they're not going to walk like us they're not going to talk like us if you're hebrew they're not going to cut off the tip of their hey hey <laughs> they went a long, long way for national security and I can see it I can see why it's that important because back then it only took one person to take down an entire nation it takes more than that now so religion as a political tool is no longer necessary it still works but the only reason it still works is because nobody has bothered to upgrade that software Nobody is up, nobody's bothered to upgrade that operating system. You upgrade that operating system and you could not possibly be controlled by your beliefs. Because your beliefs, this is what you'll believe if you upgrade that operating system. You'll believe that God would never tell me to hate someone. Now, if I hate someone, that's different. God didn't tell you to hate that person. You just hate that person. We, and I'm not trying to get into the uh, philosophical specificities of the little of all the rules in the Bible. In my opinion, those were put in there by man. Because there is not one spiritual path that speaks of a God that says, rules, 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 rules. No, it says this is how you establish and maintain your connection to God. These things help. But it doesn't say rules, 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 rules. The only reason why you have rules, 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 rules is because religion just for some reason works excellently as a form of control. The spiritual path does not. The spiritual path goes where it goes. It goes where 
your it, it takes you where it's going to take you. That is, you say, well, it's in God's hands, but then you try to control every inch of the journey. How's it in God's hands if you're controlling every inch of the journey? Let go. Let God. Like you say yourself. Your own freedom of spiritual expression. You need it. You got to It's like it's breathing. It's breathing in life. You're given this breath, and you're only on the earth for so many breaths, and you waste them worrying about religion, when if you could read that book properly, <clears throat> you wouldn't worry about anything. You wouldn't worry about, well, who's following the rules? You would be so concerned about maintaining your connection with Source that you wouldn't care if Joe Blow's not following the rules because it says love thy neighbor. You'd be like, you know, Joe's not following the rules, but that's Joe. And that is Joe. If he's not murdering, Joe's going to be all right. I'm just, just saying. If he's not doing something that will end him up in prison, who are you to say? You're a sinner too. And that's another thing. They made it so everything you do, you're going to go to hell. Do you really think God said that to his children? I'm going to put a planet there and fill it with wonders. And if you touch anything, you're going to burn in hell. Do you think man said that? Or do you think God said that? <laughs> I think man said that because a, a, a human being, at least a human being, full of creative spiritual expression and in love with his connection to source or God, if that's what you choose to call it, he can't be led around. He cannot be led around. And that presents a danger to the control mechanism. If I can't control you with your beliefs, you are now dangerous. Because if I can't control the way you see the world, you might see the way the world really is. And you might rebel against the control mechanism. And that would be bad. Upgrade the operating system, reread the book, and then reread the book, and then reread the book. There's not one time that I've read that book and not gotten something new out of it. Now, you can go through and memorize all the chapters and verses you want, but if you're not walking the path, it's just words. Just words. I don't care how much evil you think you've done in your life. I don't care how many sins you think you've committed in your life. I care what you're doing with your path. The minute I meet you, the minute I'm discussing it with you, those are the moments that count. I'm never going to judge you because I'm a sinner too. Not perfect at all. I don't have the right to judge you. You can judge me if you like, but that'll be your failing, not mine. People of the more spiritual bent, the spiritual path, and I hate calling it that because it sounds so cliche, but that's what it's called, the spiritual path or the spiritual journey. People on that journey, they are too involved in the journey to point the finger or judge you. All they want to do is help. That's all they want to do is be helpful. This is what I learned. But then you say, well, that's of the devil. And you should do it like in this book, this old 2,000-year-old operating system. Do it like this. Really? I wouldn't drink out of a 2,000-year-old cup. You want me to use this 2,000-year-old operating system. It's never going to happen. There's too much for you to learn out there. There's too much for you to know out there. And that ain't the only book. Like I said, there are things about that book that you don't even know that you don't know. 
And I'm not talking about where the stories actually come from. Because you could dig back all the way to Sumer and get all your stories. It doesn't make them less valid, but that's not what I'm talking about. There are secrets about that book and the religion of Christianity in general that they've hidden for 2,000 years. And if you do just the tiniest little bit of research, you'll see it. And see, I'm not trying to get into the politics of religion because that's what it amounts to. I'm trying to stay out of politics. All I'm trying to get you to do is reread the Bible with an up-to-date operating system. And, and don't, don't take my word for it. Don't rush right out and I'm going to change my beliefs and look. Look into it yourself. Or just keep rereading the Bible. It's like the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. It says right at the beginning of the Tablets of Thoth. Read them. And then read them again. And then keep reading them. Because every time you read it, you're going to get something new. And that's the way they were written. So you would get something new. Any book that purports to contain truth will work in the same fashion. If it's true, you should be getting something new every time you read it. And just like the Bible, the Emerald Tablets were written in allegory and parable and myth and metaphor. So if it says right there at the beginning of the Emerald Tablets, on the Emerald Tablets themselves, that don't just read it once, read it several times. Why wouldn't you apply that logic to any book that purports to have truth? That's why I have over $2,000 worth of books. Because if I find a good one, I want to read it again. And I want to read it again. And I want to read it again because there's always something you missed. There's always something you missed. Unless it's not true. If it's not true, it'll read like an old dusty tome and it'll connect with nothing and it'll go nowhere. And you'll be able to tell it goes nowhere. The reason the hook on that religion has on the souls of the people, it would be nice. It would really be nice if that were true. So they throw themselves in it wholeheartedly, 100%. Well, what if I told you that it is true? Knock off all the rules business. The book is only supposed to be about establishing and maintaining a connection with source. But everyone focuses on the rules bit, but nobody's following the rules, so how do you get a right to, to, to get on anybody about the rules? You don't get to point out anything as long as you're breaking even one of the slightest little rules because you don't get to cherry pick what's getting followed and what's not. Upgrade the operating system and you'll see that those rules were put forth by men and not God. The Ten Commandments, those are the ten most likely reasons to get you off of the path or to get you to instill negativity in another or have negativity instilled in you. The seven deadly sins, the same thing. They're called the seven deadly sins because these are the seven things that will most likely lead to death, either your death or the death of the whoever you're doing it against. Whew. <laughs> Passionate. Well, wow, that was a good one. Anyway, I love this episode, but we're getting on past the 30 minute mark. Uh, as I said, this is uh, video one of a multi episode series. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I really do. I hope you stick around for the rest of this particular series. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. If you like the video, please click the like button. If, uh, if you want to favorite it, go ahead and favorite it. And if you learned anything, or just want to hear me rant or want to have things to argue against subscribe and come back because I want to know what you think because discourse open and honest that's what I'm after but uh, 
Until next time, you hang in there.